My name is Emily Cummings Enneking. I work in the Netherlands and I'm a sculptor and I use, I work in ceramics and bronze. Um, ceramics has actually been my main training field, the field I've trained in most. And um, later I started working more in wax, which leads to a bronze sculpture. Um, I have been interested in art for, I think it's hard to say, but I would say it's all my year, all my life. Um, as a young girl, I used to go to what we call in Holland the Free Academy of Arts, where you just go after school on your bike and you work with a master, with a teacher, who helps you to make things and to, to form your ideas and to bring them out into sculpture and painting and drawing. Um, I brought these little ceramic sculptures home and they were preciously put by the, by the fireplace and slowly I built a whole collection that I, I think myself was ever so proud of and, and, and it was something different in my family. Although my parents, I have to say, are art collectors, more the traditional, the traditional artists but they, they do have given us as children a sense of, 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 of art, of, 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 of creation. Um, then I pursued my career more later in life after I first went to university in the Netherlands and started an art, an art school in Boston, which I, which I truly enjoyed. I got my degree there and then moved to Switzerland where I started working actually really as an artist. At the same time, I, I started my family, um, but there was always a way for me to be creative on the side of being, um, besides being a mother. And I uh, found this ceramic artist who had a wonderful atelier and who had children a little bit older than my children. So I took care of her children during the day so I could work in the evening in her workplace and uh, worked with the materials and the glazes that she had. But um, I felt very fortunate from that. I felt very fortunate that I could do that. Um, we didn't have much money for, an, for our own atelier, so I had to depend on other people, but this was lovely. Besides, I. I've always been, and I think this is, um, this is part of who I am, I want to share what I know and what I can with other people. So even though I was a foreigner in Switzerland, I shared this with class, I, I organized classes at my house for uh, people to come to my house and take my uh, advice on creating sculptures. Then um, I had my first big exhibit in Geneva in 1984. And then I was still doing a lot of uh, pottery, working on the wheel, although I was fascinated by the use of colors and glazes. I, s I learned how to make my own glazes and, and wanted to all almost like own it myself. Um, I went on then afterwards to, we moved to the Netherlands and after my youngest child went to school, I decided I wanted to go not to art school this time, but I went to a professional ceramic school to learn all the techniques about ceramics with all the different ways how you build sculptures from plates to from a big piece of clay to carving it down to a sculpture to build sculptures, how to do the, the all the different techniques of ceramics, because I wanted to understand the material. That was more important for me than going to art school, because I thought, well, creative, I think I am creative, and I think I can come up with my, with my own designs, but I want to understand it as, a, a, as an ambacht, we say in the Netherlands, like a real artisan almost. Um, this, was an, this, was a very, this was important, I think, in my career 
because uh, while I was going to school, I was asked to start teaching in the art academy um, because of the way that I interacted with people and um, and also I think of how I picked up the um, the skill, the metier, the work. Um, I have been doing that after I started working there. I have been doing that for about six years. And then it goes as everything goes in life. It disappears. You don't need it anymore. You need more time for yourself. You need more time in your own workplace to create. So I stopped teaching in the Arts Academy. I stopped teaching, giving courses at my own workshop, in my own workshop, and started working for me. Um, this was actually f uh, also encouraged by some big commissions that I got um, for uh, one for the city of the city where I'm living. It was a fairly limited uh, piece of art because I it I had to do what they asked. It was a it was a fairly fixed sculpture that I had to construct and build. Although it was my first monumental outside sculpture, um, I worked in in wax, and later it became a bronze sculpture. And I'd taken some workshops about this because I'm always very eager to learn and want to learn new techniques. Besides, I like I enjoyed working in wax because it's more it's a little more almost friendly than ceramics. Although I have to say, I mix both. I have times that I like the challenge of the ceramics, like mold me, bring me into shape, or I have the, um, the softness of the wax where it's like strike me, strike me, and bring the shape, bring the shape into me, but it almost seems like a little bit more friendly. Um, this was a sculpture that I that was where was of two children holding hands. It was for a Montessori school, and th the next big monumental piece I was asked for was for the uh, uh, the oil company Shell um, in the Netherlands, the headquarters. This is also an. Oh, I'm sorry. Now my phone is ringing. <laughs> I will just stop this. Sometimes people don't know that I'm in Mexico, and it's okay. Well, this is probably cut out of there, um, out of the the documentary. Um, what I then I was asked to uh, to I was asked to do a sculpture for Shell uh, for the headquarters of Shell. Um, this um, was a surprise for me that I was selected, and I and it was a challenge. <laughs> 